In this video, I'm going to show you what corresponding angles and alternate angles are, and then use what we learn about them to solve some missing angle problems. Okay, so corresponding and alternate angles are both created when we've got a couple of parallel lines, at least a couple of parallel lines, and then a line going across both of them. Okay, the line going across both of them, it can be wherever um, you like along the line. It can be at whichever angle. It doesn't really matter. That's why I've drawn two of them, just so that we can practice with two. Um, and it can be right at the end, it could be in the middle. It doesn't really matter, so I'll just place it there. Okay, we've got a couple of parallel lines, which um, I've already highlighted with the arrows, but just to make it more obvious, I'll highlight them in red. There they are. And now, a couple, one, one word um, that we need to learn, which is, what do you call a line that cuts across um, parallel lines? Okay, it's called a transversal. Transversal comes from um, a Latin word, or two Latin words originally, um, and it basically means to cut across. Okay, so this transversal cuts across these parallel lines. Okay, so we're going to study what a corresponding angle is first of all. Let's take uh, this angle right here. Okay, it has a corresponding angle over here. Okay, corresponding in a way it means a mirror image or a reflected angle. So that's not the same as angle of reflection though. So it has a mirror image angle or a corresponding angle over here. Okay, and they match. They're both exactly the same size. So if I said, for example, that this was a 100 degrees, then this would also be 100 degrees. Okay, corresponding angles are equal. They're not necessarily 100, so I'll, I'll remove that because it might cause confusion later on. Um, it, they could be 120. Yeah, they could, whatever they are, the point is that corresponding angles are equal. So those two angles correspond to each other. Um, this angle over here corresponds with this one because it's a mirror image. Whatever is going on on this parallel line, if it happens over on this parallel line, then it's uh, corresponding. So those two green ones are corresponding and they're equal. Um, over here, if I took this angle now, that corresponds to that one. And then uh, let's use black, um, this angle here corresponds to that one. Okay, so again, a mirror image. Looking at this transversal down here now, which I'll colour in green, I'm going to label this now A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Can you tell me which angle corresponds with angle A? Which angle corresponds with angle A? It's angle C. Angle C corresponds with A. So we could say that A and C are corresponding angles. And we know that corresponding angles are equal. Um, okay, so which angle corresponds with angle B? It's angle D. Angle B and angle D are corresponding. Which angle corresponds with angle F? H is corresponding with F. And that must mean that E and G are corresponding. Okay, so that's corresponding for you. Now let's talk about alternate angles. Okay, alternate angles, again, created by a transversal uh, that cuts across two or more parallel lines. So I've got the parallel lines labeled with the double arrows, but to be even clearer, let's highlight them in blue and I'll change the colour of the trans one of the transversals um, to red. 
Okay, alternate angles then. Okay, if that's the angle, th let's say we're looking at this angle, then an alternate angle on the other parallel line would actually be over here. Okay, so it's jumped over the transversal, it's on the other side of the transversal, transversal but it's now on the, if we're looking at, looking at this parallel line, it's now on the left hand side of the parallel line where this one used to be on the right hand side. So it's flipped over and these are considered or called alternate angles and they're equal. So whatever this angle is, um, it's quite close to 90, so let's say it was 85, then that's 85 as well. Okay. Whatever they are, I don't know, I don't, you know, the transversal could be at any angle, I don't know exactly what it is, but the point is that they're equal. Um, this one over here is um, an alternate angle with, with this angle here. So these two angles are alternate angles. Okay, I'm going to do the same as I did before and label up this, um, these angles down here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Okay, starting with A again, which one is alternate to A? Which angle is alternate with A? Okay, well, if um, it was on the left-hand side of the parallel line and above the transversal, then on the other side, the alternate angle is going to be on the right-hand side of the parallel line and below the transversal. So that means these two are alternate angles. Um, which one, which angle is alternate to B? B is on the right hand side and above, right hand side of the parallel line but above the transversal so it's going to be the opposite on the other one it's going to be below the transversal and to the left of the parallel line so it's G, B and G are alternate angles and C and F are alternate and in that case that, yeah, that leaves D and E being alternate angles. Okay, let's see if we can use um, that new knowledge to solve these two problems. Find the missing angles A, B and C and justify your answer. Okay, A and 140. Mm, that's all the information I've got, or is it? Well, there are two parallel lines. Okay, often overlooked, but actually going to be completely critical to solving this answer, to solving this problem. Those two lines are parallel, and we have a transversal, if we look here, going on right there, across the two parallel lines. So that means that A and 140 are equal. Okay? Are they corresponding or are they alternate? We need to get it right for our justification. We know that they're equal, so A equals 140 degrees because I said before that it's corresponding if it's a mirror image of what's going on on one parallel line mirrors exactly what's happening on the other parallel line and that's what's going on here. A is below this parallel line, 140 is below this parallel line, and it's just underneath the transversal, and so is 140. So A equals 140 because A and 140 degrees are corresponding angles. Okay, now we've got to do B and C, um, angle B and angle C. Right, so we've got two parallel lines again, which are going to make the difference to this problem. If I colour them in, then we'll be able to see them more clearly. There they are. Right, 
of course you don't have the luxury of colouring them in, in the exam they'll be black and white in the exam so you need to um, try and spot these kind of things and use the information on the diagram such as the arrows to indicate the parallel nature of those two lines okay we've got a transversal here this transversal cuts across these purple parallel lines which is going to help us 50 degrees and this angle B they're, all, they, they're the same size but are they alternate or are they corresponding well if you remember before I was saying that um, alternate angles are ones where um, it's flipped over from one side of the transversal to the other and it's gone from being above the parallel line to being below the parallel line so they're alternate they've alternated from one side to the other you can think of it like that so B equals 50 because B and 50 degrees are alternate angles okay and now we need to find C uh, well C and 85 are also alternate so they're equal so C equals 85 because C and 85 degrees are alternate angles okay so that's the end of that video about corresponding and alternate angles thanks very much for watching